Hey guys, we are going to go through the Unit 2 study guide and check your answers, make corrections. This is on proportions, rates, ratios, unit rates. Number 1 through 3, you're finding the unit rate, so you're simply dividing your first number by your second number. And you get 70 for number 1, you get 1.07 for number 2. And you get, for the third, let's, let's work this out, one-third divided by 3 over 1. You're going to keep change flip. One-third times 1 over 3 gives you 1 over 9. Number 4, you have 24 megabytes of a movie at 1 p.m. At 1.15, you have 96. What is the download write rate in megabytes per minute? megabytes per minute. So at the megabytes part, you're going to say 96 minus 24 over the minutes part. You're doing how long between 1.15 and 1 o'clock. Work this out. You have 72 megabytes that happen when you subtract your megabyte numbers and there are 15 minutes on the bottom, divide that out, you get 4.8 megabytes per minute as your answer. Number five, Marketplace has three different packs of soda that you're comparing the unit rates for. For pack one, you are doing 301 divided by 6, <clears throat> excuse me, and you get 0 0.502. And I'm not rounding that yet because when you divide 5.98 divided by 12, you get 0.498. And for the 24 pack, you're dividing 13.65 by 24 to get 0.5. Five, six, nine. So the best deal is going to be the smallest number, the cheapest, which is the 12 pack. For number six, Paige mows one sixth acre in one fourth of an hour. So you're doing acres per hour. So you're doing one sixth divided by one fourth. Remember, when you have a fraction within a fraction, our vocab word for that is complex fraction. All right, to find the unit rate, we're dividing numerator by denominator. To do that, you need to keep change flip, and you will get 1 sixth times 4 over 1, which equals 4 sixth, or 0 0.6 repeating acres per hour. For number seven, Jacob's on the cross country team. He can run two thirds of a mile in one ninth of an hour. So we're talking about miles per hour. His miles number is two thirds over one ninth of an hour. So we're dividing top divided by bottom, numerator divided by denominator. To divide fractions, keep change flip. So you're doing 2 thirds times 9 over 1, which is 18 over 3, which divides and simplifies to 6 miles per hour. For the next part, we are determining if the ratios are proportional. Tell and show which method you use to determine your answer. Remember, we have three methods. One is to simplify the ratio. Number two, you can cross multiply. Or you could use the third method, which is divide to find the unit rate. All right, let's, let's do cross multiplication. 4 times 9 is 36. 12 times 3 is 36. These are, the cross products of these are equivalent. So yes, it is proportional. And we used cross multiplication for our method there. For number 9, 
20 over 36, 50 over 90. Let's divide to find our unit rates. 20 divided by 36 gives us a 0 0.5 repeating unit rate. 50 divided by 90 gives us 0 0.5 repeating. So yes, those are proportional because they have the same unit rate, and that's the method we did on that. Let's stick with the unit rate. If I say 10 divided by 32, the unit rate there is 0 0.3125. Divide 16 by 38, and you get 0 0.4210. No, those are not proportional, and we proved that through finding the unit rate. Number 11. Write a proportion for the following situation. The distance of 15 miles on a map is represented by 2 inches. If the distance between the two cities is 8 inches, write a proportion to find the actual distance. When you're writing proportions, remember we need a word ratio, a known ratio, and an unknown ratio. The word ratio that we would do is words over inches. No, that's not right. Excuse me. Miles over inches. And let's go back and after we find out what our word ratio, ratio is, let's set up our proportion. 15 miles. Miles is a numerator number, so it goes up top. Inches denominator. The last number given is 8 inches. Inches, we see, is a denominator word. So we put that in the denominator. We should have a variable up top because that's what we're looking for. Cross multiply. 2 times x is 2x. 15 times 8 is 120. To solve this, we take 120 divide by 2 to get x equals 60, which is 60 miles. All right, flip to page 2. There's a ratio of 5 black keys to 7 white keys on an organ. Write a proportion determine how many black keys would appear on a pipe organ with a total, there's an important word, of 240 keys. All right, so in this problem, we know we're going to have to total the black keys and the white keys. You have five black plus seven white gives you a total of 12 keys. So we're looking for the number of black keys over total in this problem. Set up your proportion. Go to the original ratio. There were five black keys over 12 total keys. And in the second sentence, the number given to us is 240 total keys. That means that is a denominator number. So 240 goes on the bottom. Now cross multiply to solve. 12 times x is 12x equal 5 times 240 is 1,200. Divide that out and you get x equal 100 or 100 black keys as your answer. Number 13, Jerry drove one third of an hour or 20 minutes to the store. During that time, he drove a distance of three miles. If he continued for a constant rate of speed, write the proportion, determine how many minutes it would take him to drive 26 miles. So I'm going to do minutes over miles. Notice I did not say hours. I'm not going to use this hours because, look, it's a fraction. I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to use the minutes version. So I'm going to do 20 over 3 because that's our miles number. And then the last number given is 26 miles. That's also a denominator number. So it goes in the bottom. 
Your proportion is 20 over 3 equals x over 26. Cross multiply and solve to get x equal 173.3 repeating minutes. All right, 14a and b is pretty easy. Cross multiply, 57d equals 228. Divide that out and you get d equals 4. This one would help to rewrite it in fraction form. And then cross multiply, 19m equals 1140. Divide it out, m equals 60. All right, let's go to the word problems. You're going to have a whole page of word problems on your upcoming test that, is, that would be very similar to these. So let's get started. Write and solve a proportion for the following situations. Pizza Palace is selling five pizzas for $60.50. What is the cost if you order nine pizzas? Okay, so we're doing money over pizzas. So let's set up our proportion. You have 60.50 over 5 equals x over 9. We put 9 in the denominators because we said pizza was going to be in the denominator. Cross multiply, and you get 5x equal 544.5. Divide it out, you get x equal 108.90, and that is a money number because, remember, we were looking for x, which was a numerator money number. B. At an ice cream shop, the ratio of sugar cones to waffle cones is 1 to 3. If there are 141 waffle cones sold, how many sugar cones would be sold? So let's compare sugar to waffle. All right, and then set up our proportion. So the ratio of sugar to waffle, the one is the sugar, the three is the waffle. One is the sugar, three is the waffle. If there are 144 waffle cones, so I, th I think I just said that number wrong, 141 waffle cones, how many sugar cones would be sold? At this point, cross multiply and solve. You get x equal 47 sugar cones. All right, C. A teacher had 18 red pens. If the ratio of red to blue was 3 to 5, how many pens did she have in all? Okay, this is one of those that when you say total or in all, you have to do some adding kind of like we did on number 12. Okay, so we are given an actual number of red pens and we want to know the total. So red over total is our word ratio and let's set up our proportion. Let's go back to the original ratio. You had three red pens for every five blue pens. That's what this says. So, the number of red pens is 3, but the nodal number of total pens right here is 8. Now, go back and use this final number here. A teacher had 18 red pens, so we want to know the total. 3 over 8 equals 18 over x. Let's cross multiply. 3x equals 144. Take 144 divided by 3, and you get x equal 48 total pins. Okay, next. Recipe for cupcakes requires 5, 6 cups of sugar for 12 servings. So we're talking about sugar over servings. All right, so they just told us 5 6 sugar over 12 servings. 
How many cups of sugar are needed for 25 servings? So 25 servings, servings is a denominator number. So put that 25 on the bottom, put an X on top. And I'm gonna work this fraction way just so you'll remember and refresh your memory on that. So let's do 12 times X, which is 12X equals 5 sixths times 25. So let's go over to the side and do that. 5, 6 times 25 over 1 is 125 over 6. So I'm going to leave that as an improper fraction right now. You don't have to, but it'll just save you a step on the next part. So when I cross multiplied here, I got 125 over 6. My last step is to take this 125 over 6 and divide it by 12 because I'm dividing by 12 on both sides, remember? So, let me change the colors so we can see what we're doing. 125 over six divided by 12 over one. Keep change flip, you get 125 over six times one over 12. Multiply that out, you get 125 over 72 and if you change that to a mixed number, it would be 1 and 53 over 72 or 1.7361 repeating. Either one of these answers would be fine. Okay. E. Emily can walk one, -third, one and two thirds of a mile in one fourth of an hour. All right, so we're talking about miles over hours. Set up your proportion. So we've got one and two thirds miles in one fourth of an hour. How long does it take Emily to walk five miles? We said miles would be in the numerator, so put miles on top, x on bottom. Okay, cross multiply. One and two thirds x equals, all right, five over 1 times 1 over 4 is 5 fourths. All right. Next, or our last step is to take 5 fourths, divide it by 1 and 2 thirds. So let's go over to the side for this. 5 fourths divided by 1 and 2 thirds. All right, we need both of these to be improper. 5 fourths divided by, all right, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5 over 3. Now we're going to keep change flip. 5 over 4 times 3 over 5 is 15 over 20, or 3 fourths, or 0 0.75. Any of those answers is acceptable. And we're talking about hours. 0.75 hours. All right, flip to the next page. Let's change colors. An English textbook is comprised of two sections, literature and grammar, in the ratio of three to two. So three lit, two grammar. If there are 150 pages in the book, okay, there's a total. How many pages is literature? So we are talking about literature over total pages. So let's set up our proportion. This is one of those totals, which means you're going to have to go over to the original ratio and add. All right, the literature number right here is 3. The total number would be 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. There are 150 pages in the book. That's a denominator number because we said it would. We, our word ratio told us it would be. So x in the top, multi, uh, cross multiply to solve. 5x equals 3 times 150, which is 450. Divide as your last step to get x equals 90, and that's how many literature pages are in the book. Green it is. <clears throat> Brian's having a graduation party at his house. Croker has a party tray with three and a half 
pounds of deli meat that will feed 25 people. Okay, so we're looking at pounds over people. PPL is abbreviation. There's our proportion skeleton. So let's put those numbers in. Three and a half pounds, 3.5, will feed 25 people. Brian wants to invite 40 people. So that is a denominator word because that's how we set it up. X on top. Now let's cross multiply. 25 X equals 3.5 times 40 is 140. Last step, divide to get 5.6 pounds. <coughs> How many party trays will he need though? There's 5.6 pounds needed, but how many pounds are on each tray? Kroger has a party tray with three and a half pounds. So what you would do is just take that 5.6, divide by how much is on each tray to get 1.6. So one tray is not enough. Two trays is too much, but let's say you're a party planner, you better get two trays. You'd rather have too much than not enough. Life lesson. All right, number 16. Use the graph below to answer the questions. Are the ratios proportional? If so, write the equation for the graph. All right, remember, when a graph is proportional, it is a straight line and it goes, it touches the zero, zero origin. So yes, it is proportional and you can write an equation, but remember when we write an equation, we write it y equals kx and we're gonna put a number in front of this x. That number we put is the unit rate. So go to your graph and let's just choose any number along this line, but it needs to be in the corner of like these boxes. So let's choose this point right here. If I chose this point, then I'm trying to guess what number is that between 10 and 20. It just kind of gets messy. So we're going to choose this point here. And remember, this is our y, this is our x, and we need to know that because we're going to take this y divided by this x to get our unit rate. When you divide that out, you'll see that our unit rate is 1.5. Our unit rate also can be um, known by the variable k. So our equation is y equals 1.5 x. What does the point 20.30, 30 represent 20 watts, 30 watts. And this is actually the point we use for the unit rate. 20 seed packets thirty plants. Now if you said thirty plants will give you, will come from twenty seed packets, that's absolutely fine. Either way. C, how many plants would Stacy have if she used 220 seed packets? So what you do is you take your unit rate and you multiply that by 220. So unit rate times 220 is 330. So that's how many plants she would have. All right. Choose the graph that shows the proportional relationship. We know that it's graph one because it is a straight line that touches the zero, zero origin. B, write the proportional equation for the graph you chose in part A. All right, so remember, it's gonna be in the y equals kx form where we need a number where the k is. So go over to this graph, choose a point that's going to be at the intersection of the grid. The little, this is the grid. 
All right, let's choose this point. And remember, we're going to take the y divided by the x. So 1 divided by 2 is just 0 0.5. So our equation would be y equals 0 0.5x. Using the equation from part b, what is the value if x is 11? So what you're doing is you're just taking your unit rate and multiplying by 11 to get 5.5. All right, flip over to the next page. The graph shows a proportional relationship between the number of cans of tennis balls and the total number of tennis balls. Okay, that's our y and our x on this graph. What does the point 2 comma 6 represent in this situation? So let's find where that point is. 2 comma 6 is this point at the top, and that means it represents 6 tennis balls and 2 cans. So 2 cans with 6 tennis balls. B is backwards, C is not correct, D, six, ten, six tennis balls and two cans. It's just the reverse way of saying what you found in A. Number 19, the table and graph shows the cost to buy DVDs at two different stores. A, which store has the better deal on DVDs? So that means the lower unit rate. Okay, so let's find the unit rate. Here's our x, here's our y. Let's divide it out. y divided by x. 6.30 divided by 2 is 3.15. The next row gives you 315, so does the following row. So what that means is this table is proportional and the unit rate for this table is 3.15. B, let's find the unit rate from a graph. Remember, pick a point. You wouldn't pick this point because look, it doesn't have a number with it. You can figure it out, but don't. Make it easier. Pick this point because you have this y divided by this x. 6.40 divided by two gives you 3.20 for the unit rate of this graph. So if you compare, obviously store A has the smaller unit rate. B, how much money will Sheila save if she buys 20 DVDs at the store with the better deal? So what you're doing is you're taking the unit rate from store A and multiplying it by 20. When you do that, you see that you are spending $63 there. But how much money will she save? This store is five cents less per DVD than store B. So five cents times 20. 0.05 times 20 would be $1. So she actually is saving a dollar by going to store A. All right, question 20. The graph shows a proportional relationship between miles and number of hours that Marco bikes. What equation relates the distance and time? All right, so we just need to know y equals kx with a number in the form in the place of k. Pick a point. Take your y, divide by your x. 15 over 1 is just 15, so our equation is y equals 15x. Flip to the next page, the last page, number 21. Does the table represent a proportional relationship? You see a table? Let's label it x and y. And to see if it's proportional, we do our y divided by our x. 240 divided by 2 is 120. The next pair of numbers gives you 120 all throughout the table. So is it proportional? Yes, because it has the same unit rate. 
and the equation would be y equals 120x. Not too bad. Number 22, the table shows the weight of bunches of bananas and the price. Identify the constant of proportionality. Remember, that is a synonym for unit rate. Write an equation. All right, so we need to do, these already have W and P, but if you want to put an X and Y just because you're comfortable, that's fine. You're still taking this second number divided by this first number. 1.35 divided by 3 gives you 45, 0.45. That means it's 45 cents per pound. The next row, divide 1.71 by 3.8. You get the same unit rate, and you'll see when you have divided the third one, you also get the same unit rate. So is it proportional? Yes. What is the constant? 0 0.45. What is the equation? Y equals 0 0.45x. Final question. Let's do it in hmm, lime green. What is the value of y when x is 5? All right, so, hmm, means we need to find the unit rate, y divided by x. You'll see that it is 3 all throughout the table, so you simply take your unit rate, multiply it by 5, and you'll get 15. Now, if you write the equation, it would be y equals 3x. But if you're answering the question of what is the value of y when x is 5, that is 15. All right, happy studying.